Yo, what's up guys? David Huang coming at you from SupplementSuperhero.com, which is the coolest website on the planet. Just kidding, not really. Maybe. <laughs> you guys could be the judge of that. But today I'm going to be talking about um, three supplements that you should definitely take, and three supplements that suck and that you should avoid. And uh, this was actually, this is actually not my own opinion, so, you know, don't, don't blame me. This is not my opinion at all, but it was actually a men's health article that I stumbled upon. So, I'm going to share with you um, what the article said, and then also my own personal opinion afterwards. But basically, three supplements that are good and that you should take are one, vitamin D, two, magnesium, and three probiotics. So again, one vitamin D, two magnesium, three probiotics. They say vitamin D is good because, I mean, there's tons of benefits to vitamin C. That's a whole nother video on its own. But uh, for example, one of the, the biggest benefits is the fact that it helps you absorb calcium. Now, the thing is vitamin D is not something that's uh, naturally occurring or naturally produced by the body. We do have to get it externally. We have to get it from I mean, especially one way that your body produces it is through sun exposure, right? Um, so you have to get a lot of sunlight, a lot of sunlight so that you can get that vitamin D in your body. Um, but a lot of people out there don't get tons of sunlight or they might not be eat, eating a lot of vitamin D. So that's why they recommend vitamin D as a supplement. So number two, magnesium is also another big one. And magnesium helps with... Um, and it's something that I personally want to actually research and investigate more. I don't know a whole lot about magnesium currently, but uh, they say that it helps with the, it has tons and tons and tons of health benefits. And they recommend that, um, or they, there's tons of health benefits basically. It helps with blood sugar control, helps with digestion, helps with a variety of things, and that's why they recommend you take it. And then number three, probiotics. Um, probiotics is something that uh, really, really helps with uh, a variety of digestive issues. And my sister actually has IBS, and I know that she actually takes probiotics to help with that IBS. So I know probiotics uh, can help for sure. And they say that um, there's a variety of benefits uh, outside of digestive health, like increasing your immune function, and other things but yeah I mean there's good bacteria that we need in our body to help us properly digest and help us um, really absorb the nutri nutrients that we consume so those are three good supplements that to consider and now three supplements they say to avoid is one vitamin C two B vitamins and three calcium so again vitamin C B vitamins and calcium. So this is actually pretty surprising to me that they actually pointed those three out. The reason they say vitamin C is something you should avoid is because it's a little overhyped, which I do sort of agree with. Uh, it's a little overhyped. We can get a lot of it very easily through fruits, oranges, uh, vegetables, and they say by supplementing it, we're really taking in too much. And um, anything that we don't use in our body, anything that any extra amount of vitamin C we take, we actually excrete when we pee. So they say it's not that vitamin C is bad, it's just that uh, it may not be necessary to supplement it. Uh, number two, B vitamins. They say that um, the amount of B vitamins that we need to function is actually a really, really low amount. It's um, pretty low. It can be really, really easy to get vitamin B from food and from drinks and a variety of sources. So it may not actually be necessary to actually supplement vitamin B. And some say, some research say that vitamin B is a little overhyped and they say that they put it in all these energy products, but you might not really be getting uh, a ton of value out of it. It might be the uh, caffeine and it might be the sugar in those energy products that really give you the energy. So, uh, and then number three, calcium. So they say that calcium you can get really, the minimum amount of calcium that you can get is very, very easy to meet through food. So getting it through like milk, yogurt, spinach, kale, almonds, uh, so on and so forth. There's a wide array of calcium, um, <clears throat> calcium filled foods on the market. 
that you can get and they say that by supplementing calcium you might be wasting your money so again three good uh, supplements to take vitamin D magnesium probiotics three to potentially avoid vitamin C B vitamins and calcium so my opinion uh, I sort of disagree with men's health about this I know uh, there's a lot of researchers out there there's a lot of people out there who are sort of against uh, supplementing vitamin B, supplementing vitamin C, calcium. The vitamin C I could sort of agree with um, because there's just tons of sources out there. There's tons of food products that have vitamin C in it. So, I mean, you're getting plenty of vitamin C, so I sort of agree with that. But the B vitamins and calcium, I don't know. For me, cal with I mean, I'm sort of lactose intolerant, um, and I don't really like and I don't take a lot of milk products a lot of cheese products so for me I actually need to supplement calcium I love supplementing calcium and you can't really get too much calcium um, and then for at least from what I heard you can't really get too much calcium right uh, there's still tons of research out there we're still studying things of course but at least from my knowledge more calcium it is better in general Okay. And then B vitamins, I don't know, from my personal experience, B vitamins really, really help. I mean, I've taken energy drinks, I've taken energy shots, I've tried a wide array of uh, energy-related products, and honestly, the B vitamins, I think, really, really help with your functioning. Um, but that's my own opinion. Obviously, there's a lot of research out there still to be done, and everybody's body's a little bit different. But I sort of disagree with this article. But I do think they have some good points, and I think they have the good points, especially around vitamin D, magnesium, and probiotics. Anyways, uh, let me know your thoughts, guys. I mean, do you agree with this? Do you disagree? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Um, in the description and pinned at the top of the comment section, I do have links that go to all of these uh, supplements. If you do want to get them, you can get them all on Amazon.com. Because um, I know a lot of people shop on Amazon.com, so I've included all the links down below. Feel free to check those out. I've also got the link to the original article in the description. So if you want to check it out, you can check it out there. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic day, and sup it up. Yo, what is up, guys? This is David Huang coming at you from SupplementSuperhero.com. And today I'm going to be talking about AC11, also known as Cat's Claw, right? So Cat's Claw, a.k.a. AC11, which is a pretty interesting uh, nootropic type supplement. Um, so nootropics are brain pills, brain supplements, and uh, AC11 is definitely something that's uh, getting a lot of attention right now. And uh, this was actually brought to my attention, and I'm not a nootropics expert by any means. But, I recently uh, reviewed this product here, New Cube, and um, learned a little bit about AC11. Uh, so, just want to do a quick video on it, on some of the things I learned. But, basically, Cat's Claw, okay, that's what, the, what it's commonly known as. What it is, it's a um, vine, it's from a vine that grows in the Amazon rainforest, right? And so, it's a type of plant. And AC11 is the extract that you get from that plant, okay? Cat's claw. So cat's claw is sort of the general term for the plant, but AC11 is the extract that uh, you normally get from the plant, right? So that's sort of the difference there. Um, but it's been shown, and to much speculation, of course, that uh, AC11 has a lot of neuroprotective benefits to it, which means it it helps protect your brain cells essentially so they say that there's antioxidants in AC11 that really enhance your body's natural ability to fight off antioxidants and to protect your DNA the DNA in your cells from environmental stress from all of that stuff because all the time uh, in our bodies where we have all these free radicals right from uh, a variety of things oxidative stress stress from the environment things we eat toxins in our body and there's all these free radicals that are going around destroying a bunch of things in our cells and whatnot 
and they say that the antioxidants found in AC11 can help protect that. And because it helps protect a lot of the DNA, um, they say that uh, it really could help prevent a lot of cognitive decline and also even memory loss. So by essentially ingesting AC11 and supplementing it, it, it could really help protect your uh, brain cells, which pretty interesting. And they actually did a study once uh, with AC11 and they found that AC11 was able to destroy different types of free radicals, uh, which was pretty cool. And they found that it led researchers to believe that uh, AC11 uh, not only could it help uh, destroy the free radicals, but it suggested to them that uh, AC11 could potentially help prevent uh, Parkinson's disease, which uh, if you don't know, Parkinson's is a pretty... Uh, pretty debilitating disease, right? It affects a lot of people. It hurts a lot of people. And uh, obviously, I think there's a lot of more studying that's needed to be done. There's a lot more uh, research that's got to be done on it. But uh, so far, so good. It seems like there is a lot, um, a lot of research being done. Um, I haven't read too much into it, but from what I've seen, there doesn't seem to be too many uh, negative effects. Um, but who knows? In any case, you know, antioxidants, I'm a true believer in antioxidants. I believe that um, oxidation in our body, oxidative stress is the leading cause to a lot of crazy diseases. A lot of the um, crazy diseases out there like cancer, a lot of neurodegenerative uh, disorders out there. So I believe the more antioxidants we can take in, the more we can prime our bodies to be healthy and really help prevent a lot of uh, crazy diseases out there. So uh, hopefully this helped, guys. Um, hopefully that explanation was clear. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I mean, have you done some research on AC11? Uh, have you done some research on Cat's Claw? Uh, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, compliments, concerns. Uh, if you have any thoughts, negative or positive, about AC11. Also, if you have a chance, down below, uh, right in the comment section there, um, I actually pinned a link to where you can actually get New Cube. Uh, it's a pretty cool supplement that I actually had the opportunity to review and I, that I tried personally. And uh, I definitely had a great experience with it. So if you're interested in brain supplements, nootropics, potentially giving you extra focus, helping your memory. Definitely check out NewCube. Link's in the description below. Click that link. Um, it'll go to where you can learn more about NewCube, learn about some other ingredients in the product, and learn a little bit more about AC11, aka Cat's Claw. All right. Hopefully this helped, guys. Uh, have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching. As always, sup it up. Yo, what is up, guys? This is David Huang coming at you from SupplementSuperhero.com. Coolest website on the planet. Just kidding, not really. But uh, it's getting there, working on it. Um, but uh, today, I'm going to be talking about another celebrity body transformation. It's none other than Adrian Brody's body transformation. Not just once, but twice. So this one is really, really interesting to me because I really didn't know a whole lot about Adrian Brody. I know like he did a phenomenal job in The Pianist, but other than that, I had no clue that he actually went through any sort of body transformation, let alone two. So it's not, uh, it's not a name that you really think of when you hear fitness or when you hear body transformation, but uh, really interesting. So hopefully you guys like this. Um, but yes, if you don't know who Adrian Brody is, uh, his big breakthrough came through in, in 2002 when he was the lead character in The Pianist, okay? Not The Penis, <laughs> The Pianist, as in like you're playing the piano. Um, but he, he, the dude actually won an Oscar, and at the time he was actually the youngest actor to actually win the Best Actor Award from, from the Oscars, which is crazy. So it's good to see that his hard work... Um, when it paid off in a huge, huge way. It was his big breakthrough role. But in terms of body transformation, it was weird. Like uh, six weeks before, he was basically told um, that in about a six-week period to lose as much weight as you possibly could. 
and then he took it very, very seriously and ate almost nothing during that six-week period. And he lost 30 pounds in six weeks. Huge. 30 pounds in six weeks, which was really, really, really crazy. Um, so he basically, I mean, uh, I mean, it's not really the, I guess, maybe the healthiest thing to say, or it's not uh, extremely flashy, but he just almost ate nothing during that period. And he went from 160 pounds down to 130. 30 pounds so 160 down to 130 and this is for a guy who was already really really slim it's not like he was really heavy it's not like he was carrying tons of weight but but yeah that's pretty pretty crazy it's 30 pounds in six weeks and i think just in addition to that uh he was also really really dedicated to the role as well and i think that's a big thing that adrian brody possesses it's his ability to just think long term and to self sacrifice for a long term reward. Because during this period, he actually, in addition to barely eating anything, he gave up his cell phone, he sold his car, and he locked himself in an apartment so that he could actually learn to play the piano. So, no cell phone, no car, locked himself in a room, isolated himself so he could learn to play the piano and because of that he actually lost uh his long-term relationship his long-term relationship ended because of that because he was just so dedicated and i think sometimes and i'm not saying yeah lock yourself in an apartment to lose 30 pounds and in, in six weeks but um, i think that's the kind of mindset we have to have we have to be willing to sacrifice in order to receive the reward that we want now for transformation two Eight years later, he actually did the complete opposite. So eight years later, he played uh, the character Royce in Predators. And for this role, he actually gained 25 pounds of muscle. So not just like 25 pounds, but 25 pounds of muscle, which is crazy. So he lost 30 pounds, gained 25 pounds back. And uh, for his role in the Predators, he actually had to be disciplined with his diet, too. So it's not like he was eating, it's not like he had to give up food, he actually had to eat food, but he actually cut out all alcohol and all sugar. I know, that's a tough one for some of us. But yeah, he gave up alcohol, gave up all sugar, and he started lifting weights. He started lifting weights for the first time since college, actually. And he got on a really, really strict schedule. It was a six day week, six days per week training schedule where he lifted heavily and just sacrificed and cut out all bad foods like sugar and alcohol. In addition, he also slept in the jungle. Okay. Yeah. Slept in the jungle so that he can get into character, I guess. Okay. You don't have to get into sleep in the jungle by all means to gain 25 pounds, but that's the kind of dedication you have to have in general. And um, he also gave up sex. Yep, he gave it up for uh, predators. Okay, uh, so I mean, I'm not sure what he did after the movie came out, but yeah, for the movie role, he self-sacrificed. So hopefully this helped, guys. Hopefully this added some value, and hopefully you learned a lot from the pianist and the predator himself. Um, again, I. I mean, this one really took me by surprise. I had no clue Adrian Brody had to do all that stuff to get into good shape, but he did it. So, hopefully this helped, guys. Hopefully you liked this video. Again, please leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know your thoughts. I mean, did you were you aware? Have you heard about Adrian Brody before? Did you know about his body transformation? Did you know about his two body transformations? Let me know your opinion. Let me know your thoughts on his methods as well. Do you think this would work for you? Do you think this wouldn't work for you? And why? Also down below, right above the comment section, I've got a link to where you can get some really, really cool bodybuilding supplements, cutting supplements, bulking supplements, even supplements that where you could actually help eliminate your man boobs. So feel free to click that link below. Check out these cool bodybuilding supplements. As always, have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching and sup it up. Yo, what's up guys? This is David Huang coming at you from SupplementSuperhero.com and today I'm going to be talking about Alpha GPC.
So, Alpha GPC, I'm going to be explaining it to you in plain, simple, easy to understand English. Because I think when it comes to nootropics and when it comes to all these supplements and stuff, it, it can be kind of confusing with all these long words and stuff. So, I'm going to do my best to explain Alpha GPC in such easy words that even a fifth grader could understand it, alright? So, um, I actually uh, looked into Alpha GPC recently because I reviewed this product here, NuCube. It's actually a nootropic supplement, supplement, so if you don't know what a nootropic is, those are basically smart drugs, basically brain pills, and which have grown really, really huge in popularity over the past several years. Um, why exactly? I don't know. I think it has to do with the movie Limitless. But anyways, people are looking to get smarter. People are looking to process information faster. Also, there's tons of research right now going into uh, Alzheimer's disease, dementia, all these sort of mental health disorders. Actually, my brother actually works in a lab um, looking at studying Alzheimer's and studying Alzheimer's treatments, which, which is pretty sweet. But anyways, yeah, I looked into NuCube, and one of the key ingredients in NuCube is actually Alpha GPC. So first off, Alpha GPC stands for Alpha Glycerol Phosphoryl Choline. Okay, it's a huge tongue twister. Try saying that again and again and again really fast. It's crazy. So again, Alpha Glycerol Phosphoryl Choline. And the bottom line is that they think Alpha GPC helps to increase acetylcholine in the brain okay so alpha gpc helps to increase acetylcholine so if you're not familiar with acetylcholine what it is it's actually a neurotransmitter meaning it sends chemical messages it's sort of a chemical messenger that communicates messages between brain cells right so again acetylcholine helps to communicate messages between brain cells. Um, they say that it really helps with memory, your learning, your concentration, um, basically all the things you really need to really help with your general uh, cognitive state. And that's why many times it's known, a lot of people call it, the learning neurotransmitter. Okay. So again, acetylcholine is the learning neurotransmitter. You take enough alpha GPC, it can increase the acetylcholine. And they say that um, actually it, they're looking at it as a potential cure or at least a potential treatment for Alzheimer's, which is really, really cool. So Alzheimer's is the mental disease where um, you basically start forgetting a bunch of stuff. Okay, it usually happens with the onset of old age. And they actually did... Um, in one particular study in 2013, they actually had a study where um, their subjects took alpha GPC three times daily. Okay, so they took alpha GPC three times daily for 180 days, and they tested that against a um, a placebo control group. And what they did was they took a um, cognitive test after that after that period. And they found that those who took um, the Alpha GPC actually scored higher and they actually showed improvement, whereas the placebo group did not. Okay, so that's, that's pretty cool. And then also uh, they had another study, a separate study, where they had um, a group take uh, Alpha GPC for 90 days straight. These were dementia patients though. So this group of dementia patients uh, took alpha GPC and actually at the end of the 90 days they had a type of assessment like some sort of cognitive assessment and they found that um, the subjects ended up scoring higher and ended up uh, showing improvements on that particular assessment all right um, again I don't know like the ex exactly the ins and outs of both studies but basically, uh, both studies showed good signs of alpha GPC. And uh, just based on what I have read, based on what I have learned, it, alpha GPC does look promising. And um, I think it's cool. I mean, it's a really, really cool uh, ingredient. I mean, not only is it kind of a solid ingredient in like a smart drug like this, but it could potentially extrapolate 
into an actual treatment for Alzheimer's, which is like a really, really sick, I mean, disgusting, I mean, crazy, crazy disease that a lot of people suffer from. Um, so, anyways, guys, uh, hopefully that helps. Uh, hopefully that explained Alpha GPC in just kind of plain, easy to understand English. Hopefully I didn't confuse you guys. Uh, and let me know your thoughts. Please leave a comment in the comment section below. I'd really appreciate it, guys. Uh, let me know your thoughts, uh, comments, questions, concerns, criticism. Uh, do you think Alpha GPC is awesome? It's a pretty cool ingredient. Do you think it's complete crap? Uh, let me know. Also, uh, down below, right above the comment section, I've got a link that goes directly to where you can get New Cube if you're interested enough, if you want to try New Cube out. Uh, I tried it for days on end and had a great experience with the product. So feel free to check that out. Click that link below. You can get some more information on Alpha GPC as well as the various ingredients in NuCube. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a fantastic day. As always, sup it up. Yo, what's up, guys? This is David Huang coming at you from SupplementSuperhero.com. And today I'm going to be talking about Bacopa Moniri. So it's a nootropic supplement. Um, it's used in various uh, nootropic supplements, which are brain supplements designed to help you be essentially become smarter, improve your memory, uh, help with overall cognitive ability, even potentially help uh, fight the onset of um, mental diseases, which is pretty sweet. I'm actually pretty passionate about um, kind of mental health in general. And uh, Bacopa Moniri actually came to my attention when I was reviewing this product here, NuCube. Okay, it's a nootropic supplement, brain supplement, which I actually had a pretty good experience with. And Bacopa is actually an Indian herb, right? It's pretty interesting. You'll find like with a lot of nootropic supplements and a lot of supplements in general, a lot of antioxidants are basically from herbs, um, which makes sense. Obviously, a lot of good things come from plants, fruits, vegetables, all that good stuff. But specifically, Bacopa Muneri is um, an Indian-based herb, and they say that it contains these compounds called bacocides. And these compounds called bacocides, it's said that they really help with um, really repairing the damage on neurons and because it helps to repair the damage on neurons it helps stimulate and helps promote overall um, nerve growth right and when you've got nerve growth and you have um, a nice consistent repair of these neurons obviously it's going to help to potentially prevent things like um, you know, dying off of neurons or uh, help prevent like the onset of potential uh, mental illnesses, which is really huge, guys. Um, obviously, with anything, I mean, it's with anything in our body, right? Anything that helps to fight oxidation or helps to fight damage or helps to fight um, just overall wear and tear on your body is going to help promote growth. And the same thing goes with our brains and our brain cells. The more we can protect our brain cells, the more we can protect our neurons, the better that the neurons can communicate with each other, the better that there's, um, the more likely that there's going to be a lot of good nerve growth, the more likely that we're going to be able to think better, our cognitive ability is going to be better, our memory is going to be better, our focus is going to be better. And that's why they... Obviously, there's no cure for like dementia or Alzheimer's, at least not yet, but this is uh, one supplement or one ingredient in this case in New Cube that could help potentially fight the onset of dementia and help fight the onset of Alzheimer's. It's been, uh, there's a lot of research is going into it right now in terms of uh, how this product can potentially help with that. Um, so, I mean, uh, there's been a lot of studies out there. Uh, for example, in a 2005 Australian study, they actually had patients take the product, okay, not New Cube specifically, but Bacopa Muneri. They had the patients take Bacopa Muneri for 12 weeks straight. It was 300 milligrams of Bacopa, 
And uh, after that 12-week period, they took these memory tests and they found significant improvements in memory. Uh, another study back in 2002, I know it's like a long time ago, it's like 15 years ago, but still, uh, 2002, they had a similar study where they had uh, 76 adults supplement uh, the product, or I actually don't know the specific, but it was 76 adults. I'm not sure the breakdown of uh, which adults were placebo versus which adults were uh, on Bacopa. But basically, they found that the patients that were taking Bacopa had significant improvements in memory. And then uh, lastly, there was one other study. Um, and obviously, now, one other study, it's not like there's only three studies, but uh, these are three that I know of that are listed. Um, but uh, there was another study in 2018 where um, they had a group of elderly people take the product, take Bacopa for uh, 12 weeks, and they found that afterwards there was an increase. Yeah, they had them take like some memory tests, and they found um, significant improvement in that. Right, so, I mean, I definitely think there's uh, some good research behind Bacopa. Obviously, you know, keep in mind that if you're, if you know somebody who's got Alzheimer's or you've got Alzheimer's, I mean, don't think of it as like a cure to Alzheimer's. I don't think there's any sort of magical pill, at least not yet, but definitely something to think about, something to look into if you're interested in nootropics, interested in boosting your brain cells, whether you're a college student. Um, I mean, uh, or I mean, just somebody who, uh, or a young professional. I mean, you could be anybody, young, old, it doesn't matter. But basically, someone who's looking to improve memory, looking to improve overall mental health, looking to improve your ability to focus, uh, definitely uh, do some digging into Bacopa and see if it's something that's worth your time and worth your money to invest in. So. Hopefully this helped out, guys. As always, leave a comment down below. I love interacting with you guys. I love chatting with you guys. Any comments, concerns, questions, criticism, leave them down below. Also down below, I've got a link um, right above the comment section that goes directly to where you could actually get NewCube. If you are interested in taking a product that's got Bacopa in it, uh, feel free to click that link and check out NewCube. I took the product uh, for multiple days, had a great experience with the product. So click that link below, check it out. As always, guys, thanks for watching my crazy videos. Have a fantastic day and sup it up. Yo, what's up guys? This is David Huang coming at you from SupplementSuperhero.com and I've got a another product battle for you. And honestly, I really don't know exactly why I'm doing this video, but it is Garcinia Cambogia versus Garcinia Cambogia today. <laughs> uh, so it's going to be a uh, comparison of Garcinia Cambogia products. And... You know, Garcinia Cambogia has exploded in popularity over the years, so I think it's actually good for all of us to try various brands of Garcinia Cambogia and see if there's a noticeable difference between them. Uh, in this case, this one right here is the Bauer Nutrition brand of Garcinia Cambogia, and I'm, a, I'm actually a, a pretty big fan of the Bauer Nutrition brand because they, they have a lot of cool deals, they have a variety of supplements, which is awesome. Uh, and then we have the Garcinia Cambogia Extra brand. So the Garcinia Extra brand. Okay, so hopefully you can see that there. Um, so with these two products, uh, honestly, I gave them both. Uh, I tried them both out for an extensive period of time. Um, the Bauer Nutrition one I took for uh, about 27 days straight. Uh, Garcinia Cambogia Extra, I tried for a couple of weeks, and honestly, the really interesting thing is that I had a very, very similar experience with both of them. Almost, it, I wouldn't say identical, but pretty close to identical experience between both of them. I mean, both of them look exactly the same, and uh, honestly, they both have like the same stats, right? The serving size for each of these is um, two capsules. So one um, with a glass of water and then a meal for the day. 
Uh, they both have like that sour, like uh, seasoning smell to it, uh, right? That um, like that sour, uh, almost like I don't know. It's like a sour like smell to it. No, what I mean, there's no wonder why it's actually used in cooking. Okay, it's actually used as a spice in um, a lot of Asian dishes. Uh, I think it's because it's got that like sour like smell to it. I'm sure it's a sour like taste as well. But both of them are uh, super similar, and uh, honestly, I didn't have a bad experience with either of them. I, I wasn't puking, wasn't throwing up, didn't get sick, didn't get bloated, which is all a plus. And both of them actually gave me a same similar positive effect. And I swear to God, like, I'm not lying when I say this, but uh, both of these products, after I used them extensively for a certain period of time, I noticed that... Uh, my abs looked a lot more defined. So in case you're wondering, I mean, I have sort of an average to borderline athletic type build. Um, I've got fairly visible abs, but they're really not all that visible. I would say maybe like a solid four pack, borderline six pack. Uh, but yeah, the, I, not, not like a really, really strong, super tight uh, six pack by any means. So uh, I have a tendency, I mean, I kind of look at my body and try to notice any sort of visible differences, and I try to eliminate the placebo effect as much as possible. I try to um, try to eliminate any sort of bias in my head, but honest to God, when I tried both of these products out, I noticed that there was a somewhat visible effect in my abs. Like, I noticed that my abs looked a little more toned, they looked more defined, they seemed less fat, they seemed more tight, um, which was just super interesting. I mean, I, I mean, it's kind of hard to explain, but I mean, honestly, I had a very, very similar experience with both of these. Um, so, I mean, there wasn't a really any sort of bad experience whatsoever. Um, I would say the only difference between these two, besides the, um, I guess, the, the label, okay, I would say the label for Garcinia Extra looks a little cooler, in my opinion. The design's a little, um, little cooler, like it actually shows the fruit on the product, which is awesome. Whereas Garcinia Cambogia, the Bauer Nutrition brand, I think they're just a little bit lazy. They kind of just wrote Garcinia Cambogia on the label. And then they put um, the Bauer Nutrition uh, symbol right there, the logo. Um, there is one difference, though, and that's uh, if you get Garcinia Extra, the site alone is a standalone site. So the only thing that you can get from them is Garcinia Cambogia. That's it. Um, if you buy their buy three, get three free deal, you do get a cleanse, which is kind of cool. Uh, but other than that, you can't really order any other products. Um, also, the price, I don't know why, but for some reason, the price of this version, this particular brand, is a bit more. It, uh, not a, by a lot, but it's about $50 for one bottle if you get Garcinia Extra. Whereas the Garcinia Cambogia, uh, uh, the Garcinia Cambogia from Bauer Nutrition, um, you, it's, it runs about $45, and what's cool about the Bauer Nutrition website is that you can mix and match products. So if you don't want to buy like two or three bottles of Garcinia Cambogia, but you want to get access to additional savings, you could add other items to the cart too, like protein powder or like vitamins or other weight loss supplements you want to try. Uh, that's the cool thing about Bauer Nutrition. So if you're looking to save a bit of money and you're, you want to actually order some other products besides Garcinia Cambogia, I would say a safe bet would be to go with um, the Bauer Nutrition brand because you can choose more products, you'll save money, and there's not like a huge difference. I mean, the stats are very, very similar. Both of them uh, per serving, it's a thousand milligrams. Both of them look the same, taste the same. Uh, serving size is two capsules. Capsules are about the same size. Both of them has re have raspberry ketone, 200 milligrams of raspberry ketone. So not a huge difference. So. I would say if we have to declare a winner here, all right, by just a little slight, slight margin, I would say go with the Bauer Nutrition brand. So 
Hopefully this helped, guys. Uh, let me know what your personal experience is with Garcinia Cambogia. If you've tried one of these products, or if you've tried a different product. Also, right above the comment section, there's a link. A couple links that go to where you can purchase either of these products. Feel free to click those links so that you can get some more information and check the products out in a little more depth. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching my videos. Have a fantastic day and sup it up. Yo, what's up, guys? This is David Huang coming at you from SupplementSuperhero.com. And today I'm going to be talking about the best supplements for chronic fatigue. Um, so this is actually a pretty interesting topic because I didn't know a whole lot about chronic fatigue prior to researching it, but I know it's something that a lot of people suffer from and figured I'd do this video and talk about uh, just some of the supplements that could really help with chronic fatigue. So again, everyone's condition is going to vary and everyone's exact cause of chronic fatigue is it's going to be different, right? It's something that's really not... Um, there's no really well-known 100% cause to chronic fatigue, nor is there really a 100% cure for it. Um, the best thing you could do is just figure out what's causing it, address the issue, uh, supplement, and change your lifestyle as necessary. But anyways, uh, just based on my research, these are four of the best supplements when it comes to chronic fatigue. So, uh, number one, and these aren't in any particular order, but number one, a vitamin B6. Vitamin B6 really helps with your overall energy levels. It also helps to boost your immunity as well. They find that a lot of people who suffer from chronic fatigue, and many times it's due to uh, viruses that they get, bacteria that cause them to get sick. So when your immunity is boost, when your immunity is really, really strong, it helps prevent you from getting sick, and it does help provide you with a little extra energy. Number two, of vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is sort of, um, it's kind of known as the king of energy supplements. Uh, you'll see it many times in energy drinks, like energy supplements, um, so on and so forth. So uh, vitamin B12, um, there's a variety of benefits, but one of the biggest things is that they say it helps with methylation in our body. So methylation um, in our body basically helps with a lot of uh, basic metabolic uh, processes that go through our, our body um, and then basically when um, <clears throat> they say that as long as methylation is occurring in our body we're gonna feel healthy we're gonna feel strong we're gonna have good energy levels overall okay it's all about uh, balance within our body methylation helps with that and vitamin b12 helps with methylation and this is especially true for people who are vegans, people who are vegetarians, people who just don't eat meat because uh, it's hard to get vitamin B12 from um, sources that aren't meat. <laughs> okay. All right. So number three, magnesium. Okay. Also something that I've just been recently learning more about. Uh, magnesium, they find that people who suffer from chronic uh, fatigue, uh, many times they're lacking in magnesium. So magnesium, they say, helps with a variety of bodily functions like your nerves, your blood sugar levels, your uh, blood pressure, and they found that in some studies, when their patient, when patients supplemented magnesium, it helped to boost those overall energy levels. Okay. okay. Last but not least, number four is potassium. So potassium really helps with our overall electrolyte levels in the body, right? Sodium and potassium both really help out with that. And they say that people who lack potassium many times suffer from irritability, fatigue, uh, even muscle cramps. And if you're suffering from chronic fatigue, you might be lacking potassium. So Potassium is also a very good supplement to help with those energy levels. So load up on bananas or get yourself uh, a potassium supplement. So again, vitamin B6, vitamin B12, magnesium, potassium, four of the best supplements to help with chronic fatigue. Uh, if you're interested, I do have links below that go to where you can get these products. You can get these supplements directly on Amazon. They're not expensive at all. So if you're interested, feel free to click the links below. Uh, check out some of these vitamins and some of these supplements on Amazon.com. Also, if you have a chance, please leave me a comment down below. I love interacting with you guys. I love hearing from you guys. And let me know your thoughts. Do you think that these um, supplements really help with, vitamin, with uh, chronic fatigue? Or are they a bunch of bull crap? I mean, just let me know. I love hearing from you guys. 
And uh, let me know your thoughts if you have any other supplements that are really good for chronic fatigue syndrome. So hopefully this helped out, guys. Have a fantastic day. And as always, sub it up. Yo, what's up, guys? This is David Huang coming at you from SupplementSuperhero.com. Today, I'm just going to be giving my brief testimonial for this It Works product here. It's It Works Omega-3. Um, so, before I get into it, guys, uh, if you have a chance, if you want, okay, don't be shy, but if you want, uh, please leave me a comment in the comment section below when you do have a chance. Um, let me know your thoughts on my channel, on this video, uh, your opinions, um, you know, compliments, compliment, concerns, criticisms. Uh, let me know as a gift to you guys for watching my video and taking the time to, you know, support my channel, essentially, support um, these videos, my website. There's a link at the top of the comment section. If you actually click that link, that's, that's at the top of the comment section, it will go to where you can get a free weight loss supplement. So again, down below, pinned at the top of the comment section, there's a link that goes to where you can get a free weight loss supplement. So feel free to check that out if you're interested. All right, but let's get into it, guys. Um, so first off, um, as I've stated in a lot of the videos, I'm not an It Works distributor. I don't sell the product, but my friend Maria does. I do support her. Um, there's a link to her website in the description if you are interested. Um, but uh, as you may know, omega threes have a lot of different benefits to them. They're um, it's good for your brain. It's good for your heart. It's good for your overall blood levels. Your um, eyes. Your uh, skin, your nails, your hair, and one of the reasons why I actually I use this product and I, I use it pretty regularly is because I'm a huge believer in omega threes. Um, and I'm a huge believer in fish oils and all the benefits that it has. It's kind of like one of those supplements, similar to a multivitamin and a multi-mineral uh, protein that um, I do recommend that just about everyone takes because of just there's so many different health benefits to it but anyways in terms of my overall experience with the product um, unfortunately uh, one of the things about taking omega-3s and taking some of these general health supplements like multivitamins multiminerals omega-3s is that you don't really feel like an immediate uh, result unfortunately Okay, so it's not like pre-workout, it's not like a thermogenic fat burner or like other weight loss supplements, it's not like keto coffee where you feel like this, you just notice like an effect right away. Unfortunately, it just doesn't happen with um, with omega-3s, it doesn't happen with like these general health supplements. Now that doesn't necessarily mean it's not working because chances are that it is working that or but we just don't notice it, right? Or there's always a chance that it's not working and we don't notice it. Or there's always a chance that we notice something and we feel like there's something happening, but there's nothing happening, right? So that's the thing about these products. You just never fully 100% know. You kind of have to just kind of do your own research, do your digging, trust the source, and take it, and take it continuously as long as it fits in your budget. Um, so with this product, uh, no, it's not like I got super smart after taking the product. No, it's not like um, my uh, hair, skin, nails, eyes, uh, heart, brain, joints, all felt super, super, super good after taking it. Um, no, I mean part of it is you gotta have to take you have to take the product really on faith, hoping that it'll work, hoping hoping that it'll do something for you. But um, one thing that I can say is that um, I didn't really notice like any negative effects in the product. So that, that's always a good thing. You know, it didn't upset my stomach. I wasn't puking. You know, I wasn't farting all over the place. I, I wasn't pooping all over the place when I was taking the product. So those are all good things. Um, another thing too is that uh, I don't know whether it's downside or like I mean, or a positive side, it doesn't really matter to me, it might matter to you, but in my opinion, these gels are a little bit big, they're, they're kind of, you know, they almost look like, you know, horse size, uh, so if you're bad at swallowing, 
<laughs> if you're bad at swallowing pills, it might not be the best supplement for you. Uh, for me personally, I mean, I don't mind at all. I'm good at swallowing pills. Okay. So for me, it wasn't too big, but that's just one thing that sort of surprised me a little bit. But uh, it does have that overall fish oil smell, so that's a good thing whenever you have fish oil supplement. It should sort of smell like fish oil. If not, then there's something wrong. But it does have that nice fish oil smell, which is really nice. So that's my personal experience with the product, guys. I know it's kind of not like the most exciting video, not the most exciting experience, but sometimes that's a good thing. When you don't notice anything, sometimes that's when the products work best. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this helped. And like I said before, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. I love hearing from you guys, and also, again, if interested, there is a link at the top of the comment section that goes to where you can actually get a free weight loss supplement, so feel free to check that out. As always, have a phenomenal day, thank you for watching, and as always, sup it up. Yo, what's up guys? This is David Huang coming at you from SupplementSuperhero.com, and today I'm going to be going over the best supplements for skin based on my own personal research and what I've seen out there. Um, and real quick, if you don't want to go and watch this entire video, links are in the description below. You can get all of these supplements on Amazon.com. I've got all the descriptions right below in the description section, so feel free to check that out. But uh, let's get into it, guys. Um, by the way, I hope you guys like this nice blue scarf. <laughs> The winter season here in Wisconsin, so gotta make sure I stay warm. All right, so number one is uh, various vitamins. Okay, I didn't separate them out because all of these sort of act together, and it's just kind of boring if I just listed all these vitamins out and all their benefits. But basically, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K have all been linked to helping with skin in some way or the other. Um, typically, you'll hear vitamin E a lot, vitamin K a lot, but vitamin C obviously helps to support uh, your immune system and has a lot of antioxidant properties. Um, uh, obviously, vitamin D, there's a lot of benefits there. Of course, vitamin A is something you hear about as well. Uh, keep in mind that A, D, E, K are all fat soluble, so uh, keep in mind you don't want to overdose with those. Vitamin C, you can have a ton, okay? So, those uh, you can get a lot of those through the form of a multivitamin, so keep that in mind as well. So, all those vitamins I kind of grouped as number one. And by the way, these aren't in any particular order, uh, but these are essentially the top six in general that um, I've discovered based on my own research. Okay, so number two, and this one I've never actually tried before, but one that I find like pretty interesting, but it's evening primrose oil. So again, evening primrose oil. Um, they say that it has gamma linoleic acid in it, GLA for short, um, which has anti-inflammatory benefits and helps to promote uh, skin growth, skin cell growth. Um, and evening primrose oil, they say, has a, like a lot of different benefits to it. They say a lot of women take it um, when they're going through PMS and a lot of other health benefits, but skin is something that it does help promote. So, number three, fish oil. And I'm a huge fan of fish oil. I take fish oil just about every single day because it's got so many benefits, like for your brain, for your eyes, for your heart, for your overall bodily functions. But one benefit that it does have is old collagen production. It helps your body produce collagen, which does promote nice, healthy, new skin. So again, fish oil number three. Number four, uh, biotin. And biotin is something that's grown exponentially, I think, in popularity over the years. Um, I've heard a lot of people use it. I have some co-workers who use it. Um, but yeah, a lot of people really are big fans of biotin. Um, it's also known as vitamin B7 or vitamin H, and essentially it helps with uh, healthy fatty acid synthesis throughout your body, um, which does help with uh, a variety of things. And they say that in addition to healthy hair by taking, or healthy skin, I should say, uh, it also helps promote uh, healthy nails, healthy skin. And if you look on Amazon.com, 
and uh, links in the description, you're going to see review after review after review of people who are like, holy cow, a biotin has really, really helped my skin, it's really helped my hair from falling out, my nails look really, really nice, so biotin is definitely a really, really cool supplement just for overall appearance, and I think women in particular are really, really huge fans of biotin. Okay, number five, CoQ10. So CoQ10 is short for coenzyme Q10. It's known to be a very, very powerful antioxidant. It helps to fight free radicals throughout the, your body. And as you age, as you get older and older and older, your body is oxidizing, okay? Free radicals are forming. It's destroying a lot of things in your body, your skin included. That's why as we age, we have a tendency to get um, wrinkles, rose feet, um, blah, 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 <laughs> nasty looking skin, uh, skin becomes more sensitive or it becomes worse. And that's where CoQ10 can really, really help with your body's natural um, ability to fight free radicals and prevent oxidation. Uh, CoQ10 promotes collagen and elastin production in your body, which leads to nice, healthy looking skin. So, um, I'm actually a huge fan of CoQ10, although I haven't uh, personally supplemented yet. Uh, it's one of those supplements that you just hear a ton and a ton and a ton about, uh, backed by a lot of research, backed by case studies, and personally I'm a firm believer that uh, CoQ10 is a good supplement to take, not just for your skin, but your overall health and your overall life. Okay, last but not least, number six, methyl sulfonylmethane. Okay, and this is one thing that, uh, one supplement that I didn't really know much about at all until I actually did a personal review of the product and actually had, and actually did a lot of research to it and found person after person after person who gave a really, really good testimonial for MSF. And you can find it both in tablet form as well as powdered form, but uh, it helps with a variety of things, uh, collagen production being a big one, and also uh, having anti-inflammatory properties being another big one. So whether you want to have better hair, better skin, better nails, even better joints, a lot of people take MSM for like joint pains and joint health. Um, MSM is something that could really, really help with all of those things. And uh, obviously, I think experiences will vary, but just based on a lot of uh, people's own personal testimonials with MSM, I'd say it's definitely a good one to take. So hopefully that helped out, guys. Again, uh, multivitamins, evening primrose oil, fish oil, biotin, CoQ10, MSM are all very good supplements. Those are the top six supplements, the best supplements for your skin. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Do you agree with the list? Do you disagree with the list? Please leave me a comment in the comments section below. Again, also all of these supplements are available on Amazon.com. I've got links in the description, so feel free to click those if you do want to learn more. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic day, and as always, sup it up. Yo, what's up guys? This is David Huang coming at you from SupplementSuperhero.com and today I'm going to be talking about the best supplements for acne. So these are the top 8 supplements for acne just based on some of my own personal research that I did on the internet. Uh, not from personal experience, but uh, just based on other people's testimonials, other people's experiences, and just some of the general knowledge out there. So, let's get into it, guys. And by the way, if you don't want to listen to the whole, watch the whole video, uh, I've got links in the description below where you can go and check all these supplements out. So, feel free to check those out, but I've got them all listed below for your convenience. So, let's get into it, guys, and in no particular order, number one. Zinc and uh, zinc is a supplement that uh, I've actually been doing some reading a bit more about it. See, it has a tendency to come up in a lot of these uh, just generalized health benefits. But uh, zinc it really helps with your general cell division and cell growth in your body, which means it helps to rebuild new skin cells and. Your skin is constantly shedding and constantly renewing itself, so zinc really helps with that process and allows you to really have a nice, clear skin because it helps to create those new skin cells that you need. And it's also said that zinc helps to reduce inflammation as well. 
which is a big driving force when it comes to acne, when it comes to breakouts, so on and so forth. Number two, and this one's actually pretty interesting, but probiotics. Okay, this one actually took me by surprise, but uh, number two, probiotics. Because probiotics help you digest food. Because they help you digest food, they'll enable you to actually uh, absorb the nutrients better, which could help reduce the irritation of the skin. So by absorbing better nutrients and absorbing those nutrients more effectively, essentially it helps with your overall health, which means overall health for your skin as well. So pretty interesting. Number three, krill oil. And this one's pretty interesting too because I really don't know a whole lot about krill oil. I haven't had the chance to review it yet. But krill oil and I guess omega-3 fish oils in general. And they say that the fats from omega-3 uh, fatty acids can really help reduce swelling and reduce inflammation. Um, and as you may know, acne, for the most part, really bad acne is caused by inflammation, right? And then, of course, uh, they say that krill oil actually has a, a special type of antioxidant in it that really helps to fight free radicals. So that's something that's pretty interesting though as well that I really didn't know a whole lot about. Okay, number four, vitamin B complex. So as you may or may not know, vitamin B helps to convert the energy or helps to convert food in our body into energy. Uh, it also has a variety of health benefits as well, such as, I mean, helping with your overall immunity, overall uh, radiance in your body, um, like your liver, your skin, um, a wide variety of things, uh, your nervous system. So because uh, vitamin B complex, that's, by the way, that's the group of B vitamins, okay, the group of eight B vitamins. Uh, together. So when they work together in conjunction, they contribute to a lot of different health functions in our body, which can help fight acne. So number five, magnesium. And magnesium is another one of those killer supplements that just has a variety of uses, has a variety of benefits for us. But it said that magnesium has a whole whole range of benefits like increasing cell growth, protein production, uh, it helps to balance our hormones in our body, which is a big one when it comes to acne, balancing your hormones, your help, it helps your nervous system. And then uh, one thing in particular, they say that it actually decreases the C-reactive protein in our body. Okay, so again, it decreases a protein, it's the C-reactive protein, which they say that C-reactive protein contributes to inflammation. So because it decreases that, it decreases inflammation, which decreases the acne. Pretty cool. Number six, calcium. And this one actually took me by surprise. Like I had no clue that calcium had like anything to do with acne, had anything to do with skin. I thought it was just all bones, but Guess not. Uh, they say that calcium can help with overall cell renewal. Um, it helps to actually uh, produce antioxidants in your body, which helps to, of course, you know, fight the swelling, fight the inflammation, so on and so forth. But they say to just kind of watch where you're getting your calcium from, because if you're getting calcium from uh, dairy products, a variety of dairy products like cheese, milk, so on and so forth, they say that uh, because there's hormones in those dairy products many times, uh, it could actually make your acne worse. So it might be a better idea to get your calcium from a supplement or from vegetables, nuts, uh, other sources besides dairy if you're looking to specifically fight your acne. Okay, number seven. This one's really interesting. Um, something I never heard of until I started doing a little bit of research, but maca root. So uh, maca root, um, essentially kind of type of herb, plant, and they say that by supplementing maca root, it helps to stabilize your hormones. Okay, by stabilizing your hormonal levels, it helps to fight stress, it helps to fight fatigue, which are all contributors to acne. So, very interesting one. 
Okay, last but not least, uh, this is number eight, uh, vitamin A. And this one you probably have heard a lot about before, and you probably already know that it helps with skin. But it, overall, vitamin A has a lot of different health benefits to it. One of them being the fact that it helps with the normal shedding of your skin. Your skin cells are constantly shedding, new skin is constantly renewing, and vitamin A helps out with that. In addition, vitamin A also has antioxidant properties, which does help. Uh, with overall, um, just kind of overall health, overall, um, I guess, shedding of the skin, overall uh, protection of your skin, okay, overall radiance of the skin, reduces inflammation, so all that good stuff, okay. Again, just real quick zinc, probiotics, krill oil, slash omega 3s. The vitamin B complex, magnesium, calcium, maca root, and vitamin A. So, hopefully this helped, guys. Again, um, I've got this entire list in the description below so that you can review. I've also got links to where you can actually get all these products directly on Amazon. So feel free to click those links. You can get all of these products on Amazon. You don't really have to look much further than Amazon. And uh, if this helps, guys, or if it doesn't help, uh, I want to hear from you guys. Please leave me a comment in the description below. I love interacting with you guys. I love hearing from you guys. And uh, let me know your thoughts. Do you agree with this list? Do you disagree with some of these? Um, are there some other supplements that actually should have made it into this list? Please leave me a comment. I'm open to uh, discussion. As always, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate you. Have a fantastic day, and as always, sup it up.